Yo, what's going on guys? Um, today we're going to talk about Ivy Bolus shot and this is the follow-up video to the Ivy Fusion video. Um, if you're like if you're if you're a pro at Ivy Fusion, Ivy Bolus is going to be a piece of cake cuz um, it's not I can't say it's the same thing, but it's pretty similar. Okay, so Ivy Bolus, what is Ivy Bolus? Ivy Bolus is um, pretty much this I drew a diagram. So if you load up a syringe with drug, right, and you um, and you inject it directly into some guy's veins. Um, that's what IV bolus is. It's not an infusion. It's not over time. It's not slow. It's fast. All the drugs. So it's the direct opposite of infusion. It's fast. It's going to go straight into the veins, straight throughout, like distribute all throughout the body. And you get a, you'll, you'll start off with a high plasma level. Okay, so just like infusion, we have to make a couple assumptions because we're not really applying this to the real, real world. We're applying this in the classroom. And the number one assumption is that it's a one compartment model. Same thing as IV infusion. IV infusion was also a one compartment model. And a cool thing to note is that for this test, there's not really gonna be multiple compartments. We're only gonna work on one compartment models. And um, the, the multiple compartments, that's gonna be for the second test. Okay, so the number two assumption we have to make is that there's no rate of infusion because like I said before, it's not an infusion, it's a bolus shot. So all drug goes directly into the body. And the third assumption we're going to make is that the elimination is going to be first order. Okay. Okay, so the best way I can explain bolus shot is to kind of compare it to IV infusion. And um, IV infusion is pretty much this. We have the one compartment model. It's the central compartment only. We have a K0, which is the rate of infusion, and it's zero order. And we have a KC, which is rate of elimination with the uh, you know rate of exit, and that's first order. Um, so compared to an IV, to, compared to IV infusion, IV bolus shot is pretty much the same thing, except there's no infusion, right? Like I said before, no rate of infusion. So what happens? I'm just gonna draw an arrow, and that's it. There's nothing, because it's just the, the 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 needle shot. That's all they're doing. There's no infusion. It's gonna go directly into the central compartment. The drug is gonna go directly into the central compartment all at once. The only thing that happens is that there's a rate of elimination, and like I said. The assumption first order so boom kc that's rate of elimination um elim. so the overall rate is for um iv infusion the overall rate was dx over dt ko minus kx right or kc sorry kc um the overall rate for iv bolus well that's easy it's going to be dx i keep saying dx but i mean bc so it's going to be DC over DT is equal to negative KC because that's all we have. We don't have both, right? We only have one. So this is pretty much the same thing. Just you don't have the uh, the KO. And here are the graphs of IV of IV infusion versus IV bolus. For IV infusion, we see that it kind of goes up slowly and steady states. And for IV bolus, well, the drug doesn't start off at zero. It doesn't start off here. It starts off right here because you're injecting this drug straight away, you're gonna get a peak plasma level and then it's just gonna drop over time because that's all you have, elimination. The only thing that's happening here is elimination. That's why it goes down over time. Okay, so I know this is a lot of writing. It's not that confusing, I'm gonna explain it all. So like I said before, the rate of, um, of uh, IV bolus is DC over DT or is equal to a negative KC, that's the slope and um, we want to find the actual equation of the line, right? So we're going to integrate. And when we integrate, we find the actual equation of the line. And what line are we talking about? This line. This line, right? We're going to talk about, we want to find the equation of this line. And that turns out to be CT is equal to CO times E raised to the negative KT. And a couple assumptions that we, that we make, I mean, well, not assumptions, but just, you know, things to know is that, um, just reminders is that the rate is first order and it's going to be elimination. And for first order, remember, it's dependent on C because there's actually a C here, so it's going to be dependent. And K is not the rate, right? For zero order, K is the rate. But for first order, it, K is the rate constant. And um, only when the rate constant is multiplied by C do we get the actual rate. And just a, just a reminder, the units of rate constant are 1 over time. Okay, so let's look at this graph real quick. Um, basically, what is this equation describing? It's describing... Um, you know what what um is going to be your ct and ct is your concentration after some time so let's say we start at co co we have right here right that's our co co could be anywhere you could start 
um, in the middle of the graph. You could start uh, here. Why is it red still? Why is it white still? Okay, so we could start. We could start here. It doesn't matter. We could start here. We could start here. Anywhere on the graph, right? That's our CO. And then CT is only when some time has passed. So let's say time is here. So this much time has passed. This much time has passed. And this is going to be our CT. So everything's on the graph. Everything's on the actual equation of the line. Um, it's just, you know, CT is going to be what is our concentration after time has elapsed. And we have to note that it's a negative process. Elimination is not positive. Elimination isn't this. Elimination is this. It's a negative process. So moving on, I just rewrote the equation. So we have CT is equal to CO minus uh, times E to the negative KT. And this can be expressed as ln CT is equal to ln CO over, I mean, minus negative KT. They're similar. They're uh, the, the same equation. If you plug in, you know, the same numbers, you're going to get the same value. It's just that you we take the ln of both sides and we get this equation. But they're the exact same thing. And um, I just want want to note the graphs real quick. So if we have a graph of, you know, this first equation, CT is equal to CO, we have a curve, right? This is a curve. And if we have the graph of um, ln CT is equal to ln CO, we notice a straight line. That's weird, right? Why is one graph curved and one graph is straight line? Well, this is called a semi-log plot. And semi just means half. So half of the, the graph is going to be in log scale and half of the graph is going to be in regular scale. Versus here, you know, the whole graph is um, in regular scale. You have C and you have T. The thing is that when we convert from this number one equation, when we convert from number one to number two, something cool happens. Number two can be expressed as the equation of a line. And how do we do that? Well, let's say we make ln CT is equal to Y, right? ln CT is equal to Y. We make ln CO is equal to B. So then we make this B, we make this Y, and um, we make K, we make that into M. We make that into M, and we make T into X. Let's, let's just do that. Okay, so what, what do we get? ln CT becomes Y. Let me use a different color. ln CT becomes Y. ln CO is, like we said, is B. We have the negative sign, bring that right down. K is M. T is x, and if any, if you guys know the equation of a line, it's you know y equals mx plus b. So if we arrange y is equal to b minus negative mx minus mx, we get the equation of a line. So that's why it's a straight line when we convert it into ln. Okay, so I just added this. So when, with all straight lines, we can find the slope, right? So the slope we know is m, right? That's for all equations. The slope we know is m, and m we know is equal to k. Okay, so what is the slope? Slope we know is change in y over change in x. So if we look at this graph in particular, we know that the y-axis is um, an ln scale. So we could do we could replace y with ln c, and we replace x, because the x-axis is t. So we replace that. So if I just expand this, you know, we expand the delta sign, we get the change in ln, so ln CO minus ln CT. It could also be ln CT minus ln CO, doesn't really matter. Um, divided by the change in T, so um, it could, it's uh, TO minus TT. So T at, at time, you know, certain time. This is kind of redundant, but whatever. And you could um, just make sure the zeros match up here and the T's match up here. And if you were to do ln CT minus E is equal to um, so minus um, ln CO, you would have to make this TT minus TO just make just to make sure they match the T minus, match the T and the O minus matches the O. Okay, so I just rewrote the equation. It's nothing, nothing special. Um, so you know slope is equal to whatever m over delta y over delta x. You know, change in LNC or change in T, and I expanded it from right before. So we're gonna do a practice problem. This is straight from the book. I think Shao gave this problem in class too. Um, yeah. So the plasma concentration is a function of time after a 250 milligram intravenous bolus dose. So boom, it's gonna say right here if it's IV infusion or IV bolus, and it says bolus right here. So we know what equation to use. Um, of an antibiotic is shown below. What is the rate constant that this bolus dose follows? And
then what is the rate of elimination when concentration is 4.9 microgram per ml? Okay, so this is really, let's not focus on this right now. So we're, we're just gonna focus on this problem. So what is the rate constant that this bullet still swallows? And I just took the liberty of um, just plotting it out for you guys. So if you have C here, right? You have C versus time. We notice that if we plot it out, it's gonna be a curve. So I just took all the times and the concentration and I plot it out, it's a curve, right? It's gonna look like that. But if I make it in line, in um, a length scale, in log scale, it's going to be a straight line, right? And um, there was a question one of my friends had about a semi-log, and just to clarify, a semi-log graph. So you see these numbers here. These numbers are not after you um, you take the log of the of the concentration. These numbers are all in concentration, right? The only different thing is that they're spaced out differently they're spaced out differently so you know one is here two is here four is here six and this, you, gra you gradually notice the intervals get smaller whereas compared to the left graph you know it's one two three four five all they're all spaced out evenly whereas on the right graph they kind of you know they're they, the intervals get smaller and smaller and why is that because when we out when we take the log of c this is where that the log of C actually is. The actual um, place for 10 would probably, if we were to follow this interval, would be one, two, you know, this would be three, this would be four, five, six, 10 would be like somewhere up here, right? But taking the log, the ln of it, this is where it ends up on the y-axis. So I don't know if that was confusing or not, but that's just the thing, but these numbers are still in C scale. They're still in C scale. So when we take the slope, when we want to find the slope of it, we still have to, we can't just do, um, we can't just do 10, let's say we do eight, sorry. So we're given, let's use these numbers. Let's use the numbers that are most far apart. So let's say our CO is gonna be eight. We can't just do eight minus 1.9 right divided by uh, what's the time that gives eight that's one hour minus seven hours that's not gonna work that's no good we're trying to use we're trying to use this graph and this graph states that we need to take the ln of it right we need to take the ln of the concentrations so we have to do ln eight minus this is no good by the way so ln eight minus ln 1.9 over one hour minus seven hours to find the slope or we call it k, the rate constant. And what does that rate constant become? Okay, so the rate constant becomes, um, it's actually k is equal to 0 0.23 per hour. Remember, these are the units, right, per hour. So let me just um, move on now. Um, we actually aren't given the, um, the starting concentration concentration that we're given is at one hour what about the concentration when time is equal to zero when time is zero what's the what's the concentration so the, it would be here right well it's around 10 we don't know we don't know if it's exactly 10 but you know we just assume if we draw a straight line oh, so the straight lines are bad if we just straight, if we draw a straight line it'll it, you know there's a probability that it's gonna hit 10 so how do we prove that it's 10 exactly well we use the equation that we're given before um, we use this equation to ln c, t is equal to ln c o minus kt, which is the, um, the equation of this line, right, this line. Or we could use ct minus c o times e to the negative kt, which is the equation of this line. So it doesn't really matter where we end up. I think I like to use this right one. So let's take a look. Um, what, what do we have? We have... Um, I just picked a number. I want to pick, I picked the closest number actually. The closest number to time is equal to zero and that would be eight, right? That would be eight. Concentration would be eight and time would be one. So this is the value I picked. So then CT would be eight micrograms per ml. CO is what we want to find, right? Theoretically, we think it's 10. So we think it's 10. Uh, K is, you know, we found the four is 0.2. 2, 3 per hour and time um, is going to be when do we get 8 micrograms per ml when we get that at 1 hour 
so time is one hour and um, basically when we plug everything in we, we do CT is uh, CT is equal to CO times e to the negative KT CT we know is 8 is equal to CO CO we don't know e raised I mean times E raised to the 2.3 times time is 1 and then we get CO to be get CO to be roughly 10 actually it's 10.05 10.05 micrograms per ml so you know our theory was true so we do it mathematically or we could just you know take the graph and kind of extrapolate it